What's going on, everyone? I'm Zayden, and you're at Reef What You Saw Gardening. In this video, I'm going to be showing you 14 tools that a gardener or anyone should use on a daily basis. Let's do this. And this is a jump cut. What is a jump cut? This is a jump cut. Yeah. Number one is a snow shuffle. Now, I use this on a daily basis. It's really good for um, getting up snow, of course, and moving weeds and compost and even dust. Um, I even use it as a broom, a broom dust fan. Now, we got this this bucket one or whatever it is snow shuffle in 2021 it's actually really good quality um yeah and the only thing that's messed up about it is the handle and it's still working pretty good so these are really nice to use on a daily basis you don't know you don't want to know how many weeds i've dumped and picked up with this simple mighty little tool and it's really nice to use in the garden number two the humble mighty rake. We got this rake. I don't know, uh, um, June 2023, and ever since it's just really good. Now I know this is not a garden tool. It works really good for cleaning stuff off, or if you want to edge up around in a food plot or something, or just get to make a little dust bowl. It could be good for that, or if you just want to clean up your driveway, pretty nice. It could be good for that too. Now. I know not all of these tools are garden tools, that's fine. All these tools are still tools. Now, believe it or not, these brooms are tools. So is rakes. Yes, they are tools. Fight me. No, just kidding, but still, here is number three. So number three is this rake. Now, specifically, the Suncast brand of freak. I use this on a daily basis as well. In fact, I just used it earlier today. When you want to edge up around the garden or around a raised bed or in the vineyard, I right hear, like that clip I just shown, it's a really good tool to use and I think anyone that is remotely outside has one of these in their garage or their barn or their shed or their grand shed. Anyone needs these. I mean, these are really good rakes. So, number four is the amazing snap cut whopper. So, what is a whopper and a pruner? Now, this is a pruner, or I, I don't know, maybe just a cutter. A whopper has that end on it, as you can see. Now, I oiled these pretty good, and these are really good for. Or if you ever want to cut pokeweed plants down or something, it's really good for that. Come on, pokeweed. There we go. Now overall, I think they're a pretty good tool to use, and they're really easy. But the thing is, the downside I got this in 2021, May of 2021. The other downside of this well, I mean, just a little rusty. This was orange, Kubota orange at a time, but I brought it from the Red Collection. If you don't know what Red Collection is, it's basically some type of store in North Carolina. It's like Goodwill. But it has more tools and cabbage. It's like if you took H.H. H. Gregg in a Lowe's outlet, but merged it with Goodwill. That's basically what that is. But if you live anywhere near North Carolina, you could probably take a trip down there and probably get yourself a couple pruners or a vice grip or anything. So let's move on to number five. And that's going to be these Craftsman Cutters. So I've had these Craftsman Cutters for a while now. I believe I got them in, um, I don't know, June 2023. And the good thing about this is, well, it was back when we used to have a minivan. Um, they're really good. Now, I bought them, we bought them from Sears. You can see they're a little dinged up. They're a little dinged up. That's not, that's not dried up blood or anything. That's not even dirt. Um, that's just rust. Now, don't put your hand in there. So, you can even see there's little notches and dings and stuff. And what I like about it is you can see this mechanism if the phone can focus. Focus. You can see that there's a plunger that moves back and forth. And that helps you cut. But the bad, the down thing is, the downside 
if you cut too hard and both of your hands, your fists will collide and then your knuckles will really hurt. But I like to use these on a daily basis. And yes, if you're wondering, yes, one day I'll get a clip-on microphone so you can hear me properly. But they're really good to use on a daily basis. Let's move on to... Number six. Yeah, number six. So, number six was in the intro. Now, this is number six. I had this since, I don't know, when I first started gardening. That was a lie. I've been gardening for like 2014. Um, so this is when we first moved to this house. Um, I got it. So it's a stainless steel. It says stained with China. Yeah, stainless steel. Stainless. It was like that Geo Films video. Stainless steel. That ain't stainless steel, you know. I bought them at Dollar Tree. They were good from the get go, but as soon as I started using them a couple months later. And yes, if you were diehard fans of my channel, you probably remember me using these more often in pruning plants. And all that fun stuff. Actually, they don't even make a clean cut anymore. But hey, they still work perfectly fine. And that's saying something. I mean, they work fine for like, I don't know, cutting thicker branches and stuff like tomato stems and pruning. Now, I'm just going to call these tomato pruners. Alright, that's, that's all they can prune. Basically that and a couple pumpkins. But my favorite pruner is, that is rusty. It's actually this garden expert. Or expert gardener, I don't know. It's a pruner, and it locks, you know. It locks, so it has a different mechanism to this. It's really good, so. I don't know, maybe this is a secateur. Maybe, no, this is a pruner. This is a secateur, alright? This is a secateur. So these secateurs are working really good for me. And, I don't know why it's always dirty on them. But, yeah. They also work really good if you want to prune something like, I don't know, like a pumpkin vine. I can't go near here because there's a bee, and I want him to pollinate that pumpkin. Now, you can prune pumpkin leaves with it and whatnot. Just make sure that the leaves didn't get hit by frost because you might have to cut a couple times. It could be a little soggy. But, you know, nevertheless, you know, these succotors are really good in the garden. Now, I should... Put some rubbing alcohol on them and probably, you know, disinfect them before I go to plant to plant. Let's say if I cut a bittersweet vine down and then I transfer it to a tomato plant, I don't know what's going to happen and I don't want to get sick by putting bittersweet vine toxins into my beautiful tomatoes. That's something to watch out for. Number eight, which is rarely used on our farm, is pliers. Unless I would fix something, I, I don't know. My God. I don't know, AC unit or a garage door opener or something. These are really good to use. Now, unfortunately, I can't prune with them. You can't open a nut with them. You would have to be John Cena or the Hulk to open an acorn with this. But these are pretty good, nice Stanley tools. And they're made by Stanley. Um, this is the 84055 tool. I don't know what that means, but they're really good. Now, the nut on the back is a little bit loose. But, however, they are really good pliers. I mean, we rarely use them. That's why they're so shiny. And they stay in my toolbox, mostly. Alright, number nine is this tool. Now, this, can you tell me what it is? Can you tell me what it is? I know what it is. You don't know what it is. It's, no, it's not anything from the war. It's just like the tool that Mark has from Self-Sufficient Me. Um... But it's not, it's actually a broken rake in front of a rake, a metal rake that I bought from Amazon. It broke a couple months later. Um, and what I do with this is I usually edge up around raised beds to make it look neat. You know, it just looks better to edge up around beds to get that clean, nice look. Now, I know that this is not actually a real tool, but I treat it as a tool now. It went from good rake to garbage rake. To rake that has been abandoned to now a tool that I'm using on an everyday basis because it's fall here and I want to keep everything nice and straight. And this is a pretty good tool. Also, it does was as a pickaxe, you know, or a weapon in a video game or something, which is really neat. So let's move on to, I guess, number 10. Is it number 10? All right. Yeah. Number 10 is the most used tool I've ever used in my garden. 
Can you guess what it is before I hold it up? You probably already saw it. It's a Stanley screwdriver. And I mean, I've used this since day one. This, you can see, got chewed by three dogs. It got lost. This is worn down, you know. I use this every day. I use it every single day, and the tip on it is still sharp. I mean, I use it to build my tractor. I use it to fix garage openers. I use it to build great beds. I've used it to screw things together. I've used it to put up homemade cable boxes and satellite dishes. Anything you can think of that has a Phillips head screw in it, I'm done. Whatever outside that has a Phillips head screw, I've worked on with this tool. This is a really nice tool, and I believe I got it in 2016, along with the mini, mini Stanleys. But the mini Stanleys are not that good, so I just recommend these. Number 11, which may be, you know, what is, I, I still can't remember that word. I'm just going to say it. People may have their beliefs about this and may say, well, I don't use this on a daily basis. I use a steel brush. But let me tell you if I use a cheap little toothbrush. Now, don't be alarmed and don't sound the foghorn yet. This I don't use for my teeth anymore, all right? This is an old toothbrush, and plus the bristles are way too soft for me. I mean, look at that bend. It's just bad. But I do use it on cleaning bike chains and, you know, little things that you can get in nook and cranny, shower tiles, floors. And yes, I do clean shower tiles and floors. Yes, I clean some accents around windows and stuff with this. These are a really good thing. I even use it to clean some of my other tools with, which is neat. So let's move on to number 12, which is the same category as a broom. It's this thing that I found at the playground down my block, and it's just a old brush that I just found conveniently sitting there near the um, hippie graffiti. It was just a brush. Now, I took it, I cleaned it off, and now I'm using it every day, almost every day, mainly for my garage because it gets so dusty in there. It was built in the 70s. There's so much dust. Even to this day, there's so much dust in there. Um, so I like to use these brushes. And they're really good. And they have hard bristles. You can even use it on a toilet. But um, please don't use your wife's hairbrush on the toilet. Even though it looks like a hairbrush. Trust me, it's not. I guess you can call it a hairbrush because it has hair. That ain't my hair. Uh, which is weird. So let's move on to number 13, I guess. It is the trusty, rusty, dusty, and broken whatever this is three prongs finger tool that sounds weird whether it's to dig in a raised bed remove weeds from the garden or even loose up soil and these prongs have had my back since i don't know how old these are probably older than me um i found them since day one when i moved to this house i found them sitting by a tree i also found a um, shovel by the tree the shovel is gone. I don't even know what happened to the shovel, but I had it way before I started my YouTube channel, I can tell you that. And the handle is broken off. I still use it. Not to this day. I mean, I don't really use it that much, but it's fine. I mean, it's a good tool to have. And sorry if this video is a little long, but I'm just taking my little sweet time with the tools, you know. It's bent up every which way. I I don't know. I guess for the better because you can kind of push stuff. And I used to call this the army tool because I've been watching a lot of self-sufficient me when I first started gardening. And I just, you know, wanted to make my own garden like a copy. Which for some reason was weird. Most likely these are from 2008. I have a feeling in my gut that these are from 2008. I just have a natural feeling that these are from 08. Nothing else. Now, last but not least, number 14. Number 14 is the trusty shovel. Now, I use this for, you know, whatever it is, to harvest sweet potatoes or to dig in a raised bed. And this is a tempered shovel from Harbor Freight. Now, it's a fiberglass shovel. And you can see, I believe, um, Apple Drains made a video not too long ago of you know, picking the right shovel from Lowe's or Home Depot. And you can see the back of it is all worn down. 
Uh, it's not that sharp in the tip, and it does have the curled, the curled, you know, foot mashes. Um, unfortunately, we can find one that doesn't have the curled foot mashes. Yes, I call them foot mashes. I don't even know what they're called. Uh, but it still works perfectly good, and it even chips concrete, which is surprising because we got these again mainly these tools we got and um when we first moved in this house so yeah that's 14 tools that you must have in your garden so as always i hope you enjoyed this tool video if you did give it a nice pruners thumbs up and i'm not gonna drop my pruners share this video around please subscribe if you haven't already because that helps me heaps and i appreciate your help we're so close to getting 2,000 subscribers. Thanks for watching, and keep on digging with... Where is the shovel?